Today, we want to. I want to follow up with the lesson on how to create an engineering multi-view drawing by adding shading to your ISO view by showing you how to fill in the words in the title block and also, more importantly, how to add dimensions to your drawing. So let's start today by looking at this basic multi-view sketch, which we've already created from the previous lesson showing the ISO view along with the front, the top, and the side view of our block. First of all, if you want to actually change the title block down here, it's pretty simple. You simply double click on whatever block you want to change, and then it opens up an edit box in which you can actually then go in and you can change those numbers around in the, uh, in the title blocks. You can also play around with the font try different things with that and then click the green check mark when you're done. So right now the title block is optional, but if you want to start playing around with changing some of the stuff in there, we will be adding that later on as our, to make it an official engineering drawing. Up here in the ISO view, one thing I like to do, even though it's not required in engineering drawings, is to change this so it looks like the part that you created. So if you'll get inside the fence with your mouse and right click, the third line down says show shaded view. We want to show the shaded view and what that does, it then makes it look just like the part that you created in your studio. This clearly shows students as they're learning engineering that here's your part, here's the front view, here's the top view, here's the side view. So you can actually see it in realistic terms. And finally, to add dimensions to your drawing, we come up here to this tool that's a universal symbol for dimension, which is the double arrow with the two lines. We click on the dimension tool, and I'm going to start by giving it the overall width. So I'm going to click on the point I start at, and I click on the point I want to end at. Pull down, pull to the left so that the number is centered between the arrowheads. And when I click, that gives me my dimension of my width, 4.670. You always want to make sure as a minimum on your drawings, you have an overall width, an overall height, and an overall depth. So I'm going to add the overall height. It can either be done on the front view or it can be done on the side view. So I'm going to do the overall height on the side view. Click, click, pull it to the middle, and there I have my height is three inches. Now the last overall dimension is your depth, which is the distance into the page. I can either do that on the top view here, or I can do it on the side view here. I'm going to choose the side view and click, click, and pull it together, and there's my depth. So I have my overall width, my overall height, and my overall depth. Very important to have those three, because whoever's machining this needs to know what size of block of material to get in order to adequately machine this part. We're not done dimensioning yet because we still have to know the dimensions of every side on here. And so I'm going to start out by defining the height of these steps here. I'm going to click, I'm still in my dimension command. I'm going to click on the bottom of the front and then I'm going to go up to the second step for just a minute. And I'm going to pull that dimension over here a little bit further away from the part and put it there. You'll see why in just a moment. So that says it's two inches from here to the top of the second step. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to click on the bottom and just go up to the first step, pull it over and put it inside here and click. What I've just done is I've created a nested dimension with the larger dimension on the outside, the smaller dimension on the inside. So with these three dimensions I have on here now, I can tell the height of each step. You never assume the height. You, you base it on the dimensions that's labeled. So this first, this first step is one inch tall. If I do two minus one, I can tell the next step is one inch tall. And if I do three minus two, it tells me the next step is one inch tall. You, you, one of the rules is don't over dimension your drawing. So if the dimension can be figured out by adding or subtracting other dimensions, then you don't add it again on the drawing. So that gets our vertical height. I need to get the width of the steps now. So I could put it on the front view, but it's getting kind of cluttered. So I'm gonna come up to the top view and put the dimensions up here. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna click on the starting point. I'm gonna click on, 
well, I first of all have to click on my dimension two because I escaped out of it earlier. You're going to click on the starting point. You're going to click on the second step, and that gives you the bigger dimension nesting inside the 4.67. And then I'm going to click on the starting point again in the first step, and I'm going to nest that inside of that. So it starts with larger to smaller on the nesting. And now I've fully defined the width of all my steps because this step is one. The width of this step is two minus one. And the width of this long part here is 4.67 minus two, which is 2.67. So I don't have to put any more dimensions to get the lengths or the widths on here. The only thing left to dimension now is the actual hole itself. While I'm still in the dimension tool, I click on the circle and I pull down. The dimension tool automatically recognizes this as a hole. And so it's putting the proper notation of, of a diameter on here. Now, generally you want to try to keep all of your dimensions inside the three views, inside the white space. So I'm gonna put it up here. And again, the little symbol out front means diameter. So this hole has a diameter of 1.330. The last thing we need to define is where the center of the hole is located from two edges. So I'm going to start in the corner and I'm going to go to the center of the hole and I'm going to pull down here. And it tell, that should, tells me that if I drop it, that that hole is 1.34 inches from the left edge. I also need to define it from the top or the bottom. So I'm going to do center of the hole. Did I get it? Center of the hole to the bottom edge. And I'm going to pull it now. This is where you don't want to drop it on this side because it would be on top of the part. So we are actually going to have to put it out here in the white space on the left. You try not to put any dimensions out in the white space just to keep it clean looking. But sometimes you are forced to actually put a dimension out there because there's nowhere else to drop it. So I'm going to hit escape. And so what I have now is a completely dimensioned part with all the dimensions covered they can either be seen or calculated i have my shading on it and i have my title block filled in so i'm i'm good to go and this is an official engineering drawing